The sole purpose for home picketing is to intimidate and harass. It is not about free speech and education of the general public. It's about intimidation of the provider, and that needs to be recognized on the federal level. They found out where I lived in 2005. I drove by my front door and I saw this little orange piece of paper sticking out of it. And I knew immediately what it was. I knew that it was some kind of flyer alerting my neighbors to who I was, what I did for a living, and where I lived. They started picketing regularly on a monthly basis in 2006. They were very derogatory, uh, say, calling me a baby killer. Um, they hold signs that say Jennifer hires the baby killers. No, but I mean, do you think you're actually doing anything? Are you like having any kind of impact at all? The protester that comes to my house uh, publishes a newsletter called the Prisoners of Christ newsletter. And it is published on the Army of God. And he sends this newsletter to prisoners who have been imprisoned for murdering doctors, bombing clinics, kidnapping providers. So he's communicating with them and he has our names and addresses so that when these prisoners are released, they can perform an act of violence. Throughout the years, we've been called upon over and over again as providers have been subjected to an unbelievable amount of harassment, threats upon their lives, residential picketing, blockades, uh, clinic invasions. We came into work on that Saturday and we we're totally blockaded out. When I arrived, it was still quite dark out. It was Thanksgiving weekend. All of a sudden, from that corner over there, there's about 65 people that turned the corner yeah. and just started running. And it was about 5.45 in the morning. Just ran over here, pushed everyone out of the way, and sat down right in front of here, and there was like 70 people. So we had a couple of staff in the building who couldn't get out, and some patients in the building who couldn't get out, and then the others who were trapped in the vestibule. And then we had people who couldn't get in. At one point, I kind of got pushed in the middle of it and was being just tossed around. There was like fights going on on the other entrance. Yeah, and see what you promote right here? As soon as they learned that there was a back entrance, which we'd never use, they just like bomb rushed us and just knocked us over. And it was just kind of like pushing and really crazy. One of the most dramatic things that happened was we had patients who were midway between a two day procedure. One of the women was in a lot of pain. Um, she was probably experiencing intense cramps you know, on a level of 1 to 10, up really high. They were here for the second part of their procedure and they needed to be observed medically. And they, um, there was a, a reason that we had them come very early in the morning and they'd been stuck outside for three hours. The police would not answer even basic questions about what was going on. And we just kept going over to the lieutenant and the captain and saying, face, like, here it is, you know about this. Here's my lawyer, she wants to talk to you. And it didn't matter. They didn't take even that basic step, even for this, for these two patients who were in need of care, and basically made a medical decision, which they are not qualified to make. I made the decision that the lesser two evils would be to let the blockade last for one hour, and then at that point in time, to their word, at 7.30, they got up and opened and left, everyone had access into the building at that time. When police accommodate that kind of illegal behavior, it draws protesters from all over the United States. And for many years, Philadelphia was one of the hotspots for clinic protests because of that kind of accommodation. Um, it is a very bad idea. Every day, I worry about being shot or targeted, um, especially now that Dr. Tiller was murdered. I've never felt this vulnerable in my job and um, you know I'm taking more precautions than I've ever taken before and I don't like living that way but I will not hide but I'm not gonna say I'm not scared you know it, it, it is scary <laughs>